Hey guys, Will here. Today I'm in a Mate's 99 model MX-5 where we've just installed a new Duffy. head unit into it. So, Ben is my mate. Who's hey guys, my name's Ben, nice to meet you. <laughs> so what we did is we, um, we hardwired it in because we couldn't actually get a ISO adapter for this unit. So what I'm going to do in this video is work the way through how we reverse engineer the factory wiring with no wiring diagram to figure it all out and get it all working. <laughs> that should oh. just lift out. Yeah, All right, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. Status update: Will forgot his multimeter. He's done a he's done a noob move. Oh boy! <laughs> I guess we're going to your place. Uh, maybe it's in here somewhere. All right. So, seeing as my head unit came with a hands-free McBobby microphone. Um, I'm going to mount it here, probably because this windscreen's so small, I don't want it to be too in my face. Up here, it's kind of right where your eyes would be. So, um, putting it in a very low key kind of position down here. Then we're going to one run the wiring down here and under, and then to the back of the head unit. Mad. Mad. All right, so what we're doing now is we're just going to hardwire it to the harness because we can't get an ISO adapter for this particular harness. So I'm just testing with my ground connected, so this is the ground here, so shove that in there like that. Now I should have 12 volts here, or 13 volts or aroundabouts, even with the battery with the engine off, yet you see 12.5 volts. So that's telling me that that's my wire, which is always on, always live, so we can solder that up to our connection. Switch it back off. All right, so we've got the yellow wire, and this is pretty universal, the yellow wire on pretty much every head unit. Obviously check, but the yellow wire is typically your um, your positive phase on battery. So the first thing we want to do is slip a piece of heat shrink over the end like that. And usually I try to make the heat shrink about twice as long as the joint that it's going to be covering. And then I don't tin the wires beforehand. What I do is I twist them together like this in the middle. So I kind of twist it up. Make sure it's nice and flat like that. And then we get our soldering iron and we just um, we just solder it up and then we slide the heat shrink up so I'll show you how that works. There we go. Alright. So hopefully you can see there it's a really nice clean connection with no burrs, nothing poking out. So then we slide this over like that. So we've got our heat gun, so we'll just shrink it down. Simple as that. Alright, so the next one we want to do is our accessories power, which is the power that switches on when we turn on the ignition. And that's what actually triggers the head unit to turn on, so... And we're just going to follow exactly the same process again, so we'll strip it. Now you can buy wire strippers, but when you're like me and you spent six years doing this pretty much constantly, you don't need to worry about it because you can just do it by feel. But yeah, obviously if, you don't, if you're not confident, get some proper wire cutters because what you'll end up doing is cutting it back and back and back and back and back and then you'll end up with no wires left to work with and that is not a fun situation to be in. So, making sure we don't tangle up our wires, we grab the red one. Feed it through there so it's not tangled. And don't forget our heat shrink, so we cut off a bit of heat shrink. It's the worst when you solder the wire and then realize that you didn't heat shrink it. So slide our heat shrink over. 
We've connected our ground again, and what we're going to do is we're just going to check that this is in fact the right wire. So we've hooked it up, and you'll see there's no voltage. And we switch on the ignition. We should see 12 volts. Switch it back off again, and it goes back to zero. So that's definitely the right wire. So that's all good. So we'll just connect that. And we connect it up with our heat shrunk red wire. Twist it on again. Grab our soldering iron and our solder. Right. Don't stick your hands through because I'll burn you. <laughs> Now one thing you also want to just watch is when you're using a gas soldering iron, there's a little port on the side which is like the exhaust vent and that can get very, very hot. So you just need to make sure you angle it in a way that's not going to melt the dash. Because if you're paying attention to the soldering that you're doing, it's very easy to forget and accidentally point the, um, the hot part at something that will melt. So that's soldered now, so sit that aside again. Slide our heat shrink over. Now that's got a bit of a burr on it, that one, so we'll just flatten that out. Alright, I'm actually going to wrap this one in a little bit of electrical tape too because it's torn the heat shrink just for a little bit. But that's okay, so we'll shrink it down. Yeah, so you can see that there's a little bit that's come through the heat shrink, so we'll just wrap that with some electrical tape. Alright, so what we should see now is that should read no volts, and then when we switch on the headlights, we should get 12 volts, or we're only getting 2 volts. Huh, switch it off again. Alright, try with the ignition. Try with the ignition on there. It shouldn't be the case though. Headlights on? Yep, headlights on. Switch it off again. Okay. Ignition off. I got high beam. No, it wouldn't be that. Um, it's definitely meant to be a good, good thing. So that's probably just the wrong wire, but that's alright. So that wire is not the right one, so that's fine. We'll just cut that off and terminate it. So the headlights are definitely off at the moment, yeah? Yep, they're definitely off. So we'll get the one above it. Is this one. Alright, we'll do that same test again. Alright, so headlights off. So headlights on. 12. So we've got 11 volts, switch right. them off again. Yep, back on. Yep, that's it. So that, you can see that's our illumination wire, which that, what that does is when the headlights are on, it dims the lights on the um, head unit so they're not glaring at night. Mm -hmm. So that's nice and easy. And that one goes to the orange wire with the white stripe on most head unit wiring harnesses. So again, we Is that the same, they, is that color coded pretty much? Like is that the... Oh, on this side, yes. On yes. that side, no. Okay. So on the car side, it's always different. See what me, who has no <laughs> idea what the frick I'm doing would have done, is uh, color coded. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm learning, so. Right. I bought this car to play around with, so... So orange wire with white trace is always your illumination on the head unit side, so we'll twist that up. See, I won't even need to watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is our antenna wire, which in this case we're probably not going to connect because this car, this head unit that we're installing only, all it does is it sends a signal to the antenna when the, um, whenever the head unit's switched on, not just when the radio's on. 
So what that means is that in a car with a power antenna that goes up and down with the car, um, the antenna will always come up anytime the head unit's on, even if, you're not, even if you're not listening to the radio, and we don't want that. So we're gonna leave that disconnected for now, and then what we're gonna do is another time in another video is we're gonna solder a little switch somewhere on the dash that we can um, switch on and off to raise and lower the antenna. So that way we can switch it on, have the antenna only come up when we want it to. So we're not gonna connect that one for now. So now we just need ground and um, all, of our, um, all of our speaker wires. So we'll get the ground connected in the same way. Because we have to double check that there's actually two speakers, which I didn't know. I'm pretty sure there is, because this head unit's only got four wires. Yeah. <laughs> <So> positive and <laughs> yeah, negative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that kind of answers that question. Um, so. Do S what did you do with the auxiliary cable that was on top of the ESCII when you would moved it? Uh, it's just on the side there. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Alright, so that's the ground cable done. It's nice and secure. Like that. So we're actually only going to end up with one wire left on here, which is the... Um, antenna wire, but I'm going to just leave that dangling in the back, I think, for now. Yeah, right. I'll probably just tape it on, so that it's, um, just because I don't want to leave an unterminated wire there. Actually, I'm going to terminate that one properly while we're here. Alright, so if, you got, if you're left over with any wires that you're not using, what you do is you just put a little bit of heat shrink over the end of it, like that, and then, and you will burn yourself doing this, but not badly. <laughs> so, just leave it sort of halfway across. Backing out like that, and then hit trigger. Okay. And then just pinch the top. Ow, ow, ow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that stops it from shorting out against anything. This is really, really handy if you've got a car that you don't have a wiring diagram for. You just give up? No, not at all. <laughs> Reverse engineer. So what you can do is you can get a double A AA or a C battery and um, what you can do is you can tap the terminals on the battery right? and you'll hear, if you don't know which speakers you're left or you're right, you can actually figure it out by doing this. So that's the left. Tap it, so that's the left. But even more than that, if you don't know the polarity, if you don't know, you got your positive, your nipple on the battery which is your positive, <laughs> nipple. Um, <laughs> he said nipple. What will happen <laughs> is <laughs> when you tap the battery, if you've got the polarity correct and you've got the positive to the positive, the speaker will push outwards. And if you've got it backwards, the, pe the speaker will suck inwards. So that's a really easy way to tell, but you never, ever, ever leave it held on there for a long time. Because what that's doing is that's square waving the, um, the voice coil and you'll burn it out. So all you do is you just tap the terminal and that tells you that you got it right. If, you, if, it, if the speaker's pushing out. So yeah, in this case we know the wiring already, so we don't need to worry about it, but just in case you didn't know. So that's that. So now we just need to solder that onto the wires for the um, for the speakers. I'm colorblind, so you can help me with this. Oh. So we want, what have we, we got front left? I can see that. I'm you not, can see white and black. I can see white and black because I'm <laughs> colorblind. <laughs> that means I can't see colors. So, all right, so white and black with a so white with a black trace and left front speaker negative. Okay. So that's this side. So that's that one. So I need to get my bar. Hit shrink again. Okay, so that's all of the wiring done for now. So what we need to do now is just tidy things up. What's that? Have you looped that through the bloody... No, it's just underneath it. No, it's through it. That's all what? Right. <laughs> How did that even happen? Where's this part going? Wait, where did it go through? It was through the middle. It's because of what, I, what it was. It was on the side and then I've gone around oh, it and I've wired something. 
So, all right, so what we want to do now is we've still got our harness there, which I want to leave that wire there because we're going to use that later on for something else. Oh! Oh, he needs some milk! <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> needs some milk! He's tripping out. What the hell? That's the one where it's like, get that boy some milk! <laughs> <laughs> So what? Get us some milk! We need some milk! <laughs> <laughs> Let's show okay. Make yourself useful. Alright, um, yeah. We need, um, what do we need? Electrical tape. So these are for my rear speakers, which yeah, I don't have. Which you don't have. Because <laughs> my car is a little princess of the car. Probably not thinking. Help. Why don't you use the um, I could, but that would be soft. I need to prove my manliness by pinching Yeah, I like to prove my manliness by burning myself with a piece of heat shrink. <laughs> ow, ow. Ow. He needs some milk. <laughs> he needs some milk. <laughs> Get that boy some milk. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's working. Yeah, boy. Alright, Definitely Portuguese. <laughs> oh, we're good, we're good. Whatever that is. <laughs> so, off. I don't know how to use this thing, but That's all I want to like do is... Menu. I just want the radio, for now. Uh, I just want to hear hissing through the speakers. Yep. And then what I want to do is I want to go to... Options, sound options. It's not down with this button. Yeah, what is there a sound option? Oh, there's an EQ button. There, there we go, there it is. Fader balance. Alright, so we go left. Left. Good. Yeah, it went that way. And we go right. Right. Yeah, it went that way. Good, so that's working. What about front and back? Oh, so no. if I go to the rear, it should disappear completely. Yep. So what we want to do is we want to fade it all the way to the front. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is pull off this little fascia bit. Did you click this on or? No. It just came like that. No, well, I'm just going to cheat. We'll do it like that. <laughs> do we need that bit? Yeah, we do. But we can just bend it back. Oh, and I'm not going to bend it. I'm just oh. releasing it. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, all so right. we're installing just this bit. So we're installing that. Right? Okay. So, all the cables. What's this one? That's mic box and it's the other. That's the long mic cable, is it? The thin ones are the really thin ones. Okay. Cool. Well, then we'd have to improvise and cut stuff, cut stuff and make brackets. But it, the whole idea of these things is to make fit everything. So, except you do it. No, that's it. So we shove it in like that, and then all we need to do, it's for a cover really, we get that fat screwdriver, and we just... Oh, you bend all those? Bend these things. Oh. Right, and what that does is it just locks it in place. So you just got to be really careful, you only push them in the direction that you actually want to go. Like so. Oh, and we're secure. So, now we have a way to mount the stereo. Simple as that. So now we just need to plug everything back in and we are done. Oh, then we need to sort out some wiring yeah. and stuff that I'm going to yeah. run through my center console. 
Alright, so antenna not plugged in. Yeah. We oh, we'll plug in the antenna cable. Okay. Because you never know, you might still get a bit of signal. So I'm confident. Is that easy? Oh! If it does rattle, we can we can put some foam in there and sort it out. There. So we've run. We had a USB and an auxiliary uh, cable coming from the head unit, and we've run that under my center console pieces, and um, it's coming out through. There's these latches for my boot and petrol at the back of that center console compartment. So that's pretty much it guys, um, as you saw there, that's how you hardwire a um, head unit into a car. Now, normally you'd be able to get an ISO adapter, which is an adapter which will plug in and I'll show you what it looks like quickly, over here. <coughs> so, yeah, normally you'd, have, um, normally you'd have an adapter like this on the, back of your, um, on the back of your head unit, which you would then plug into another adapter which plugs into the car's factory wiring so that allows you to just plug straight in without any of the problems with um, soldering and stuff occasionally you run into little glitches with things like the antenna power or the amplifier power not lining up properly so it's still good to check um, but in our case we've hardwired it so hopefully the video has shown you the tools that you'll need and the um, diagnosis sort of process to figure out the best way to wire things up if you're doing it from scratch without any indicators so hopefully you found the video useful if you have like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time thanks a lot for watching bye Ooh. Mm -hmm.